all in all, you'll have spent round about two hundred and eighty thousand yeah, pounds basically. on the project. Yeah, that's yeah. remarkable. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top ten incredible Grand Designs creations. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at the most stunning buildings Kevin MacLeod has ever visited. Number 10. The Disco Home Overall, this design is going to be very invasive. Claire has said they've done developments like this before for other people. Well, yes, but you haven't done them in an area like this before. From the outside, this Kensington home looks relatively unassuming. It's sleek and modern, sure, but you'd have no idea what was hiding inside. A giant subterranean disco room. The whole thing, which also has a home cinema and a projector to go with its flashy state-of-the-art dance floor, is very mid-2000s. But it's an iconic episode. And the best part is that unlike many Grand Designs builds, it's not a blight on the landscape. That's great. It's, it's a, a surreal combo. It just about blends in with its neighbours and keeps all the fun to itself. To me, this, this whole floor is, is like a, a kind of luxury hotel suite. In 2021, the house was put on sale by its owners for £4 million, which isn't that bad of a price for a multi-bedroom luxury home in central London. Number 9. The Eco Arch The fundamental building blocks of the house. This is it. The so-called gravity-defying house, since its completion, the Eco Arch has become a popular part of the Kentish landscape. It was a difficult build which contributes to the house's notoriety. Absolutely everything went wrong during construction, including a rather dramatic collapse of the roof halfway through and the budget almost doubling. And with its heavy overcoat of soil and gravel evenly spread and in place, what a relief it is to see the building up and in one piece. Still, the house ultimately was completed to great effect. It was carbon negative, producing more energy than it gobbled up, which gave Richard and Sophie some welcome money from the government for all their trouble. Next door to the kitchen, the living room box thrusts out from beneath the arch to terminate in a projecting window. It was so impressive because it had no support beams keeping it up. Just clever engineering and a lot of clay and glue. Number 8. Devon Snake House Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one to say the least. Also nicknamed the Spiral House or Fossil House, the Devon Snake House was intended by Stephen and Elizabeth to fit in with the natural landscape. They ran into some problems right away, only budgeting £600,000 for the build, which Kevin estimated should cost more than double that, around £2 million. And indeed, they did go over budget, but only by an impressive £200,000. It's like a, a wooden spaceship. It also only took them two years to complete the construction, which is also impressive for a Grand Designs build, despite being a big delay on their initial timeline. And it was just as stunning as the design suggested. I'm coming down holding on to both handrails, not because I'm scared, but because I'm enjoying the experience. Building this curved house was very complex, but certainly worth it. Number 7. Gloucestershire Treehouse John has lovingly built his own model of their house to be. This is it. I love your trees. Yeah, they're all to scale. Who wouldn't want to live out their childhood dream of moving into a treehouse? That's exactly what John and Noreen decided to do when they saw some other fancy treehouses in Britain. They set their sights on a piece of protected land in John's hometown of Disley and got right to work. It's the moment at which the building stops being a house and becomes a treehouse. The land itself was only £85,000, though they spent more than a quarter of a million in the end. It was definitely ambitious, constructed out of a series of steel anchors and beams because they weren't allowed to use concrete for a full three stories. They didn't quite finish the project during the episode, but it was nearly done and absolutely jaw-dropping. There has to be something special about a house that is as lovely in the rain as it is in the sunshine. Number six, the underground house. I mean, we have a budget and we want to stick to it. <laughs> This building has an unusual history, beginning as an artist's studio in the early 1900s. 
It eventually became Lansdowne Studios, used by the likes of John Lennon to record music. It was bought by Jeff and Audrey Lovelock, and they decided to turn this huge underground space into their dream home. It would have all the luxuries, including a gym, wine cellar, and private car park, not to mention countless bedrooms. Oh, this room is almost as I remember it when I first saw it. Extraordinary. Typically, they ran into a lot of setbacks, switching between building companies more than once to realize Audrey's dream. But it was all worth it. They made a stunning home and put it on the market for £7.5 million in 2014. Are you happy to live underground? Um, I don't feel like I am, that's the thing. I mean, I know technically we are, but I've got enough light there for, for my, my needs. <laughs> Number 5. The House of Straw You can never quite imagine what the site's going to be like when it's empty. Still in London, one of the show's first episodes was also one of the most unique. Construction began in the late 90s and was spearheaded by architect power couple Sarah Wigglesworth and Jeremy Till. The idea was to build an ecologically minded house using straw bales as a creative way to insulate. The metal's not really exposed. The metal's not exposed. Insulate. I would be worried about it coming that way. It was one of the first sustainable homes like this built in an urban centre, making it unique at the time and even now to a degree. When is it going to be done? It's going to be done by... Go on, pick a date, go on. <laughs> March the 1st. It was a success, and 20 years later, it was still the home of Wigglesworth and her partner. They didn't decide to pack it up and sell it like so many other Grand Designs architects do. Number 4. Shipping Container House These are mine. How are you? These are these. Hi. Kevin, how are you? Oh, good, you? Not too bad. These are amazing. Homes made out of shipping containers have become more and more popular in recent years, but this Irish episode of Grand Designs remains one of the best examples of the trend. Architect Patrick Bradley built his stunning house in Derry, North Ireland, a few years ago. Using four containers stacked on top of each other, they were covered in more eye-pleasing materials and were almost unrecognizable as their former selves. By engineering and steel, meet landscape and it's beautiful. This is what impresses Kevin the most, and even he'd like to live in there. It's even got bay windows and a balcony when the construction is done, making it all worth it. I can't get it. I can't get that whiff of container. <laughs> no containers. <laughs> Number 3. The Lifeboat Station At low tide, Tenby Beach is an unreliable place for heavy machinery. We've seen a lot of episodes of Grand Designs that have ended very badly when people tried to build on the constantly eroding British coast. But this couple in Tenby, Wales, miraculously seemed to have cracked it. Their plan was to restore an old lifeboat station, which was ditched by the RNLI for a newer facility, making it into a home. They've had to flow with both time and the tides to rescue this difficult building. But 18 months after they started, they have rebuilt their haven. Tim and Philomena negotiated for a grueling seven years to get permission to buy the lifeboat station and part of the beach. And with it being a listed structure, they weren't allowed to do many alterations. Getting the materials onto the protected pier was the hardest part, but it was all quite complex. Still, they came through and created an amazing home. This has been a challenging project for Tim and Philomena, and their refusal to compromise has produced something that pairs rugged beauty with practical, elegant comfort. Number two, the computer cut house. There's a lot of theory involved in this. Yeah, I'll be happy to see it working and things being produced by it. Partners Celia and Diana had a £300,000 budget to work with when the time came to build their joint home and they pulled out all the stops. A huge machine was bought and rolled onto the property to build boxes out of plywood, cutting the pieces to size using a computer program. This experimental approach, as Kevin calls it, means they hopefully won't need to use a crane in the construction. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's, that's proper architecture. This created a few hurdles, mostly in how the windows were going to be fitted, but it worked out all right in the end. The house was beautiful and an ideal place for them to spend their later lives. 
Journeying through time may bring the warm glow of nostalgia, but there is nothing like journeying through a building. Number one, the woodsman's cottage. There's nobody who's kind of a novice, well, apart from yeah, Ben's a novice here. <laughs> Building your own cabin in the woods and getting away from it all is something a lot of people dream about. But Ben Law was the one who made that dream a reality. They were building in Hertfordshire using a design created by Ben's father-in-law. And Ben was always involved in construction, doing most of the woodworking himself, which is what makes this build so charming. Hello. Yeah. How are you? It also came in pretty cheap, only £28,000, and went up in less than a year, making it one of the least stressful episodes. Today, you can also book tickets to visit the family home if you want to see it for yourself, and Law works to preserve the surrounding woodlands. Plus the cost of the site. No, that's with the site. With it, actually, that is incredibly cheap. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.